Так. Now then YouTube, welcome to another video. If you haven't guessed it already, or maybe I've put something in the title, this is MR2 suspension day. Advanced suspension. I'm gonna go one or two steps further than what you've already seen. Starting with, I've bought an actual thing to stop the wheel moving when I'm doing the, the uh, toe on the front. That's good, isn't it? Eh? Making steps in the right direction. But also, what else have we got? Got these hub stands. And we'll be able to get into the coilovers because we're gonna have to do the corner balancing again today. Because if you've not noticed, I've lost a bit of weight. Oh yeah. So I've not lost quite as much as what I want to lose, but we're gonna set the car up for if I was about 83 kilos in my race gear. Because I'm, I'm gonna try and float in the you know low 80s of the, of, the, of the kilograms. Last time we did this, I was 96. But uh, yeah, I've been, been coming back down with the weight, lots of exercise, less calories. I've also got some new inner and outer tie rods for the front of this. Now these ones are fine, they, they work, they're not broken or anything. It's just that adjusting them is a pain in the ass. You are allowed to run proper um, kind of rose joints on the end of it. I've seen some people doing that, but these will be fine for now. I don't want to go too daft. But to start off this little suspension day that we're having, I'm going to try a caster mod. And when I say try it, I don't know if I'll be able to get enough camber when doing this. But basically what we're going to do is on the front of the car, we're going to lift the strut up and we're going to twist it uh, 120 degrees, I think it'll be, won't it? Because there's three bolts. Basically, we've got some camber slots now which go to the inside of the car. What we're going to do is make them go to kind of like the middle of the car. I think you'll see, you'll see when we get to it. Um, I saw some racers doing this in the MR2 Championship at Brands Hatch. Everyone says a bit more caster on these makes them really good. Apparently they're really low from the factory, four or five degrees apparently. I don't know what we'll have now. I do have a gauge to try and measure it, but I don't know what it'll be at. But we'll, we'll, we'll test it out and see what we're doing. Right chaps, first step then. I've got the caster gauge set up on the car. And caster's not something I've ever played with before really, outside of you know video games, Forza, Gran Turismo and stuff. You know, maybe it's not something I should change before having a chance to test it, but from what I've read, I should enjoy the change. Um, now, I've not noticed that the MR2 is, you know, particularly bad at self-centering or anything like that. Um, but what we're doing here is we're changing the angle of the strut. Kind of, we're, we're trying to force the strut back. This is what this percentage sign is. This is how much percent the, the strut is angled backwards. So it reckons it's at 4%, so that means, say if 0% was dead straight, well, just 4% over. 4.19 is the, is the metric it's coming up with. And we want to get that to about 6 or 7, really. And what that'll do, in theory, is when the strut's kind of angled a bit more like that, because the suspension is pushing a bit more towards the front of the wheel, it causes the steering to want to self-center a bit quicker. And the negatives of that, I don't really think there are any, apart from slightly heavier steering at, at low speed. But the MR2 has got beautiful steering anyway. It's one of the uh, one of the great electric hydro setups on this, when it works. I've actually not had a problem with it since I changed the fluid. If you've got an MR2 and you're curious, we did have some problems with it early on. Okay, so we're at the front of the car. And now I will actually show you when it focuses what we're gonna do. So I've lifted the car up, yeah, and we've got these camber plates at the top. Now, as you know, in the championship, we're not allowed to do too many things. I've spoken about this before, it's really limited. So this is one of the things that we can do, because we're not actually changing, you know, we're not adding anything, we're just kind of using what we've got. And we're allowed to run these BCs. So what we're gonna be doing is taking these three nuts off and then rotating the full shock this way, or rotating the top mount pillow ball top mount so we don't have to adjust anything at the bottom we can just do it so we've got the measurement of 4.19 now if we can get that caster up to six or seven and also remain at least three degrees of camber then that's going to be fucking minty i reckon so let me do this and i'll show you what it looks like afterwards in case you're still struggling okay so can you see now what i was talking about 
So we've kind of got the angle into the centre of the car, which means that the strut should be further back and it should increase our caster. Now the question is going to be is whether we can get a balance between caster and camber from using this. You are allowed to use those wobble bolts for the camber. Um, I hate them, I don't like them at all, but we may have to invest and get some. Well, super interesting results. We've actually lost caster by doing that. We're now down at 2.62%. So by rotating the top mount, the struts actually come forward ever slightly. But the slightly better news is that we've also lost camber, which means that I can now at least try and move that plate further in, which will increase camber and caster, and hopefully get it somewhere at three degrees of camber and about six or seven percent of ca uh, caster, yeah, caster and camber. If I say the wrong thing here or there, apologies. I best clean the whiteboard up because we've got, we've still got the information from last time if you watched my old corner weighting video and then got some of the, this is my alignment whiteboard, right? But it needs to clean because we're starting afresh. So I'll just get rid of this. We'll keep this because you know, it'd be interesting to compare. And then I'll start making a note. Well, I maxed off the adjustment all this way. We can potentially take these two end screws out and move them over here and try and get a bit more. But let's see what a difference that has made. First up, caster. All right, we're still at less than what we had originally. How does that work then? 2.2 degrees of camber. So we've, we've gone up 0.7 the degree of camber and we've gone up a little bit on here, but definitely not as much as what we wanted. Okay, so the next step will be, I will take these two end screws out, move them over here and really shove that strut in and see what happens. Okay, that now looks vastly different to when we started. Hopefully this makes the difference we want. Well, we've finally got an increase on the caster now. We're at 5.2%, so we've got a percent more than when we started. And the camber is pretty much cock on. I'd like a bit more than that ideally. It's pretty much there though. I would prefer it if it said a bit more then, we'd have a bit more to play with. So we'll see what happens when I adjust the toe because as you can probably tell, we're towing out quite a lot there. But yeah, that's, that's decent. So we've not quite hit the 6%, but we're certainly up there. We'll see how that feels. It should feel way different. Well, maybe not way different with only being a percent, but hmm, fortunately there's not a lot more we can do. Oh well, good fun, eh? All right, I'll do the other side. Well, super interesting. I did exactly the same on this side and we've got pretty much cock on the caster that we wanted to start with. A bit too much camber, 4.2. But what's the difference then? Well, I think when we've been fucking about, this one's decided to tow in a little bit and the other side's towed out a little bit. That doesn't make sense. Is the steering wheel straight? I don't know, I don't know. But I'm gonna write down the figures anyway. What I'm gonna do next is change those tie rods and then we'll look to start doing the corner weighting in a bit. Or maybe we'll do the corner weighting first because that'll affect the ride height. I want to change our tie rods first just to get out of the way and see if I need a special tool or not. On the Integra I had to buy a special tool to do this so hopefully not on this because I definitely haven't bought it if I did. So yeah, super interesting anyway. Did exactly the same. Exactly the same but we've got way more on this side. 4.2 degrees of camber and 7.3% caster. Shit, Tyrone. Okay, let me get these tie rods changed then. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. I fucking hate these rusty fucking tie rods that are on this. <laughs> Cause me so much pain. Well, it does appear that these are the uh, originals. So I didn't get any boots, which probably would have been a good idea to get some new boots as well. And the original boots are held in by the same sort of clip you'd get on a, on a CV joint. I've not got the best access. Might be better from up above on this, but I'll try and get it off. If this bit of plastic weren't here. Oh, hang on, I might be able to get through. Access hole. Oh, my beautiful cable ties. This side, believe it or not, is bolted in. Please don't snap.
Yeah, it snapped. That'll be another cable tie then, will it? <laughs> Loads more access pulling that cover off. Yeah, a lot of people in the racing remove this because they, um, you know, when you come off circuit, you, you lose it quite easily. But to me, that's something that you'd want to keep. Same with the wheel arch liners. I lost this one at Cadwell, but surely it'd be more efficient through the air if you've got your liners in. The underside of this car is fucking battered now with all the off-roading stuff we've been doing. I'll show you what we're working with. So this is a tie rod which does the steering, right? There's a little lock nut there into the steering rack that we have to remove. I don't know if you can see that. Is that any better? Because I was blinding myself getting them out. So we may or may not be able to break that off, but let's find out. I can't get the fucking boot to slide over this ridge either. There's some more room. Yeah. Come on, mate, give us some more room. I can't find a spanner. Two minutes. Okay, I found a spanner that should fit. I don't know where all the spanners have gone. It's a weird size though. It's, it's somewhere between 27 and 30 I think, or maybe it is 27, because that's the one that I can't find. Just like I can't find what the fucking thing is, there we go. Now, is it reverse thread or not? It's something that we should probably try and find out before, before trying to get it off. I just checked the new one and it's not reverse thread, so. Oh, there we go. That was tight. Okay, that's loose. So we can undo the outside, which is a, oh, it's a split pinner. Very crusty split pinner. I thought I'd change this, but maybe not. Top tip, if you're changing both sides, slacken them all off first. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Now the fun part, that is one rusty castle nut. Tempted to just put the nut gun on and let it rip, but we might be able to get it out. It's so rusty I can't even see the fucking thing. Well, this is going to be a pain. <laughs> so rusty the tiny little pick has just fucking snapped it at the back. Okay, I'll show you how to fix this. Fixed. Fucking heart took some beating. Okay, something slightly cool about the MR2. The tie rods are not sided, so I can just get these roughly the same and put them on. But there's a problem, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Of course, we'll be using some thread locker on the inside one. But there is a problem, you'll have spotted it straight away. The boot's only gonna come off if we can separate this and we can't. Well, we can, but it's a pain in the ass. So, what are we going to do? Hey, what are we going to do? What do you think we're going to do to get that off? Give you a clue. Have you worked it out yet? Still not got it? These fucking things have caused me so much pain in the past. I'm going to enjoy this. Uh oh. Ha. Ah.
Now I'll have to measure that because I didn't do it before obviously, but we'll measure it, slide that on, job's a carrot. Well, the task of the tie rods is complete though. A bit more challenging than what I thought it might be, but the problem really was access. And luckily one of the lads up here had already made uh, 29, it was a 29 that size. That's done now, so I'm just gonna put this bit of under tray back on and then it is truly time to start corner balancing. Hey, we might be slightly delayed. <laughs> I was just uh, cleaning my tables with the air hose and accidentally knocked the old tripod over. Now, hopefully that's just the polarizing filter, which is about 20 quid and not the 600 pound lens. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, well, the filter definitely took the brunt of that impact. Uh, unfortunately, the Tamron is damaged. It took quite a lot of persuasion to get the filter off from this corner, where the impact was. Of course, the cannon's not even gonna fucking focus on it. There we go, it's quite a lot of damage, really, but then the worst thing is, there's a crack, big crack in the lens. So, it still works, I've just tried it, it still works, the show can go on. But that's fucking lame, isn't it? <sighs> Retard. Right, so the camera seems like it's working, so... I don't know, maybe that crack will let some light in or something, I might have to get some, some tape around it or something, but... Yeah, I've set up the um, tables now, so I've got the scales out, I've got the wheel stands on. Now, I was thinking today of taking the coilovers off and trying to set the bump stop, you know, just trying to set them up properly because when I first installed these coilovers, I did some things which I probably shouldn't have done. I think what that's caused is for them not to perform at their peak. You know, I've learned a bit more about coilovers since, and yeah, I was planning to do all that, but you know, I've been here like nine, seven hours today already, believe it or not. So yeah, time's ticking, and we're just gonna get an idea where the weight is. We've got about under 20 litres of fuel. I've still not fixed the fuel gauge yet, so I don't know how much fuel I've got but under 20 litres, and um, yeah, I've got, everything's about right. We're gonna weigh the car, and then I'm gonna put some ballast in to cover for me, about 83, 84 kilos, and then we'll be able to see where the cross weights are and stuff, see if it's still quite tight, because I got it pretty much perfect-ish last time. I got, it, I got it all right last time, but yeah, we'll drop it down, get some ballast in and see what it is. So the weight, without me in it, 874, obviously we've got no wheels on either. That's pretty light, isn't it? What do the wheels weigh? Well, unfortunately, I've not got my luggage scales yet. I've ordered some so I can weigh little bits, but they seem to have got lost somewhere between China and here. <laughs> so uh, I can't weigh the wheels, but maybe we'll weigh it again at the end with the wheels on just to make sure we're not stupidly underweight from fitting that dead weight battery. <laughs> but yeah, that's the only change really. We should be about, I don't know, maybe 15 kilos lighter than last time overall. But yeah, we've got a, an idea now of the cross weights and stuff. They don't look too bad, they're not perfect, but they're not too bad. So what I'll do now is go and gather 85 kilos from somewhere. So we'll be putting that up to 960. My weight limit is a ton with the driver, so. Oh, it's, hmm, 874. Right, I'll go find some ballast. Right, I've got it just about right. It's kind of dancing between 8.5 and 90. I don't know why it's dancing so much. It might be because, you know, I've put quite a few fluids in there. So maybe they're still moving about a bit. So we've got three oil containers and then one water, which I found near Red's Bay, so thanks for that. And I've also got my old battery. The original lead acid battery in there as well. I was gonna put this in, because this is a couple of kilos, but I didn't need it. So we're floating around 8.5 and 90 usually. I think it's because the load cells are meant to be for pounds and it just dances around. So what does that mean? I can only find a yellow pen, that's what it means. But we're right in the range of me being between this weight. I weighed myself this morning, I was 87, so I'm a little bit over that now, but you know, I'll get on the bike all week and sort that out or something. Um, so we're at the upper range of this, which is about right, that's, that's about the range I want to be in. And as I said, we've probably got perhaps a little bit too much fuel, but only a litre or two anyway. 
and a litre of fuel 750 grams so you know it's not going to make that much difference. If you didn't see my last video when I was doing the corner weighting I spent a lot of time doing it and I'm spending a lot of time doing this. I'm already about 90 minutes into this now and it's just trying to fine tune how the weight sits based on the coilovers. So what you're doing is you're extending and lowering the ride height essentially. When it's on the flat ground it's where the weight is is by the damper length or the shock length. So the idea is to get a perfect 50-50 of the weight on these two, the front left and the rear right, and the weight on these two, the rear left and the front right. So the weight here will add up the same as the weight here. And I've had it a couple of times where it's been cock on. Okay, we're about to hit Nirvana. It's gonna look funky this car, I think. So I had a real weird thing then where I had, I was pissing about for ages, and I had the rear weights almost the same just to see if I could get it there. And I, I could, I could get the rear pretty much reading the same. But what that meant was, there was like a 60 kilo difference at the front, from the front right being the heaviest to the front left being the lightest. It's crazy. And um, yes, and we've gone a bit over, look. I've gone a little bit over. But now we've got like a, a, a the, the cross weights are the ones that we want to get even. It's nice to look at the other stuff, but I need to stop getting distracted by it. Now we are going to have some serious rake, I think. And this front left is probably going to be the tallest wheel out of them all. I mean, if we, just judging by how many threads are on the coilovers, it's fucking so different, it's mad. Yeah, it's hovering about where we want it. Roughly 30 kilos between each side. Oh, you've got a bit of a glare going on, have you? Not better. Okay, I'm going to call it at that anyway. It's hovering about 49.9%. Okay, let's have a look now. Let's put these, we'll keep the scales on, but we will put the car on its wheels and see what it weighs. It's still got the ballast in, my weight ballast. Let's see what it comes out at. Right, I've got to drop the car down on the scales and we'll see what she weighs. Hopefully not too light. And we have to see how our cross weights without the wheels on compare to the cross weights with the wheels on. Ride height looks okay on this side. Ooh. <laughs> we knew that was going to be the funny corner. It's kind of high on the rear left as well compared to the... And this side's definitely lower. That is ridiculous. I've... I'm probably about 10, 15 mil higher here. I mean, it'd be great for the clearance on the ramp, but... Okay, let's ignore what it looks like. What are the numbers saying? Yeah, 1,006, 1,005. Okay, it's still a bit too close for comfort because I have got more fuel in than what I would probably have when I'm racing. And my fuel gauge still doesn't work, despite my best efforts. Wasted a full day on the fuel gauge yesterday. Well pretty much a full day on the fuel gauge yesterday and I still can't get it to work properly but we've got about just we've got about 15 litres between 15 and 20 litres best estimate and the weight in kilograms by the way it reckons a thousand and five which whew, I'm not sure how I feel I was a bit nervous I did get weighed at Brands as well I got weighed for the first time as you can see this kind of stuff is Super fiddly, but it's really good fun. Well, just in case the video wasn't quite long enough, I thought I'd carry it on tonight. I've got a dog with me somewhere, look. But I'm back working on the MR2 again, and as you'll have probably seen already yesterday, I got a bit too carried away just playing with the suspension of the scales. Now, that's only the second time I've ever tried to do a corner weight. Uh, you know, I've not really learned it. I spent some time doing some more reading last night and you know getting getting more of a, a feel for what I was actually trying to do rather than just playing about and something that kept coming to the back of my head was that my dampers would have been all over the shop my coilovers were you know they were just so mixed matched and I thought you know the first thing I'm going to do when I get back to the unit tomorrow which is today is reset the coilovers 
and not just reset them, I've set them as well. Wow, deep, right? What I've done is I've set the bump travel on them, because when I got these coilovers, uh, it was only two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago when I first built the car, but I didn't know that much. I've, I've, just doing the racing, I've learned so much about, you know, what you should and shouldn't do and how to do certain things and just stuff like that, you know, I'm always learning. I mean, when I make these videos, you know, I'm learning and I think, you know, a lot of us are learning at the same time. But just to quell some of the, the waffle a little bit, let me show you what I'm on with. So we're back here. Dog, come on. You gonna help me get these coilovers done? Yeah? You gonna help me get the coilovers done? Yeah. Don't get in the fucking way though, because you habit of getting in the way, you. I'll put you back on the lead. Hey? Okay? I'll get you back on that fucking tow bar and you'll be whining again. I ain't got any biscuits, I'm afraid. No, I ain't got any biscuits. I ain't got any, sorry. Coilovers then. So they're all off the car. So yeah, everything that we did yesterday just been wiped out, but that's fine because I made a mess of it just playing with it too much. So I've got the coilovers all off the car and they're all sat down here. Now the ones that are missing the springs, I um, obviously stripped them down, built them back up without the springs in, and then I've been setting the bump stop. And I did take some pictures. I had Ed here with me luckily, he was here earlier helping me out. And um, yeah, the front the front was way out. It was, you know, gonna fuck the car up before it ever hit that. Um, the rear wasn't too far away, but I did adjust it slightly. And uh, this is what we ended up with on the front. And this is what we ended up with on the rear. So I'm pretty happy with these now, but look at the difference then. This is the front, just about the top part of my finger. This is, this is how the front right was, yeah? So the difference in where the bracket is for the lower part of the uh, coilover, way different. And what that does is changes the, the kind of length here, kind of there to there, look. So when I first got the coilovers, I fucked about with that to set the ride height, which you know, as we all know now, is, is naughty, naughty, very naughty. So on the rear, that's pretty much flat. I got to a nice point where the, the threaded part is sat nice and flat on here. But the one that I've just taken off the other side, that has what, about half an inch there. So not, not too much to adjust on this side, but get a look at this. The spring was loose anyway. I'm not allowed to run helper springs, so yeah, this might all be in vain yet, but I've sent the bump stop anyway, and we'll see how we get on. So I'm just gonna build the coilovers back up, um, set them all to how these ones are for the, the damper travel. So just like measure that distance, set it there. That's nice and flat, so I'll just wind that up until it's the same. Uh, wind it down, sorry, until it's the same. And then I'll put them back on the car and we'll see where the ride height is. And then we'll do the corner weights again, yeah? Exciting times, dog. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, I just got a bit carried away yesterday, but what's, what's the harm in that, eh? That's how you learn, right? But yeah, I made a bit of a mess of it. So we're doing a, a great reset, you know. <laughs> I know that's a bit of a popular phrase at the minute, isn't it? We're doing a reset on the coilovers. Dog, Stella. <laughs> that's my name. Alright, I'll get these back on the car then, and we'll see what the ride height looks like. Alright, it's time to see how the ride height's been affected. I think we're going to be quite a bit higher, but I guess we'll find out. I'm going to turn the scales on as well, we'll see what she cross weights at and stuff. Okay, let's see where she is then. So at least my dampers are in good health now, we've got a good starting point. And um, I'm going to go home because it's like, what time is it? 10 to 10, it's cowboy time. Definitely a good bit higher, but not not offensively high. Oh, would you believe that? We've got almost the same ride height all the way around. Lovely stuff. But how are the crossies? Hey, it's not half bad, you know. Good place to start from. Well, I just thought I'd do a little uh, sequel. Is it a sequel? 
It's not a pre uh, interlude, not interlude. Obviously, we've had the main video, this is just added on to the end. What's that like? We should call it bonus content. There's a proper movie term for it, though, isn't there? Like when you wait to the credits after the Avengers or something, there's always something happens, isn't there? Well, this is it. So I've, I've gone back to square one. Ride height's not actually too bad. You know, because we're not allowed to change any of the arms and stuff, if some people proper slam the race cars, and there is a minimum height you have to be, but, you know, I quite like that ride height, actually. Still got my rake. I love my rake. A little bit of rake down to the arse end. Ah, I like it. But yeah, that's all from today, so redeem myself slightly from the mess that I made yesterday and now the coilovers are all even and we've even set the bump stops properly and we've got some, some proper travel again in the dampers and everything's even so real good place to start from now, I'll just get that crossway even tomorrow and then do the alignment and stuff but you know I can do all that, fucking solid mate got it, no problem but the dog's knackered so get the dog to bed I'll be up here tomorrow but hope you've enjoyed watching Well chaps, this is yet again turning to be very interesting. I've, what time? Imagine if you had a camera that focused on. Yeah, but I'm good at other stuff. Retard Brian. Oh, oh, oh shit boy. <laughs> so yeah, not, not too late, but definitely late enough that I can't make too much noise. Otherwise people will be upset with me. But I've done the rear. Pretty happy with it. I need to do the toe again. Um, but the camber's good. I just need to play with the toe. We're all good, but we have a problem because I can't get the camber that I want on the front with the caster that I want at the same time, which you know we kind of always knew we were gonna get. So I'm at like four and a half degrees on this side to get the caster I want, and the other side I've maxed it out, and um, I can only get six. But I'm thinking when I get some, I'm gonna get some of those camber bolts, which I hate. I hate those camber bolts, I don't like them at all, but it's the only way I'm going to get the camber that I want and the caster that I want, so needs must. But that is definitely it for now, so don't worry, I'll have it sorted, plenty of time. I go home, dog. Oi. Should we go home? Yeah, should we go home? Let's go home. Alright, peace out. Hey dog, think we dog, 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 Stella. <laughs>